Hey, hey, are you curious? Are you curious about the milkweed? Ruby, Ruby, hey, what would you take? Hi, I'm Rich Lund, just a guy trying to help out the monarchs. And today, for those interested, I'm gonna show you my modern milkweed process from seeds to sprouts to getting them actually into the dirt and all the steps in between. What exactly is it that I'm doing these days? I'm feeling a bit more settled into my new location, but not all the way there yet. Are you really ever done? But this is our fourth summer here in the yard, and upon moving in, I had to start from scratch when it came to milkweed. Equipped with Asclepius syriaca seeds from my previous homestead, common milkweed, I promptly got to work that first summer I was here. I honestly forget the number, but with about six to eight sproutlings, about this size, I planted them in a location that, as you can see now, their fourth summer, they are flowering, and I've got now some pretty healthy stalks. For the first two summers that I was here, just about everything I needed milkweed for, from finding eggs, to sourcing food for caterpillars, or collecting seeds during the fall, came from milkweed off property. But as you can see from these healthy stalks, nice and tall, admittedly with a few more ants and aphids than I'd like, the milkweed I need for what I do is, is already here. Now I'm looking to expand a bit more, and the process I'm about to use is the one that you see going on here. And it's the same one that I used to start those six to eight four summers ago. So allow me to show you my modern milkweed process from beginning to end when they make it into the dirt. And it begins, of course, with our seeds. Let's get them soaked. These days, I begin by simply soaking the seeds in water. I got two containers here. I'll write the date that I start the soak. This is 623. Today, by the way, is July 9th. So that's approximately two weeks. Here's from July 1st. And this container says four or five, but we'll be crossing that off and writing today's date on there. Now also, for those curious, I am using non-cold stratified, non-scarified seeds. These have been pretty much at room temperature ever since they have uh, been collected. They were never frozen. I just take a pinch. And I should say also, this same stock of seeds are these guys as well. So when it comes to, do they need to be cold stratified? I've done several videos that show plenty of evidence they do not need to be. Eyeballing it, we got about maybe 20 to 30 seeds in there. And I like to put some water in there about halfway up. Maybe a little bit past. Takes a while for them to kind of let that water soak into the seed casing. But still, if, it, if you so desire, I always do, you can slosh them around, get them nice and wet on both sides, and let the process begin. Seven slash nine. Okay, so here's what we just did. But let's show you what's it going to look like after eight days of soaking. Now sloshing this around a little bit, we can already see that, yep, We've got plenty of activity happening. Plenty of seeds have not done anything yet, but we can see that there are plenty of others that have indeed sprouted. Now that little first part that comes out of the seed casing, this is a, a pretty radical part of the plant because, well, it is called a radical, though spelled differently. We can notice there's some that are further along the way than that first one there that popped, and plenty of other seeds that just haven't yet it is something that is a bit of a bell curve where some of these guys might start off early we haven't seen the bulk of them start to pop yet let me show you what I mean with the next one so this here is twice as long this is 16 days of soaking and we can see that a whole lot of them have not only popped out the radical but that radical has elongated now there are some that guide out there on milkweed and mention that these should be in the dirt by the time that radical elongates and I'm not saying that that isn't true for maybe best practices, but I'm not into the best practices here. I'm trying to show you instead, here's what I do, and it's working fine for me. But now that elongated radical, well, that's what's going to eventually form the taproot of the plant. You could say that the radical is kind of like the, the embryo of what will be the main root. Now here's one you can see from the soaking, the seed casing already now has come off. And it is true that the plant, when it's emerging from the dirt, part of, part of what it does is it 
it grows and develops its leaves to flex out of that seed casing. That is more natural for it. But this doesn't harm the health of the plant. I've had plenty do this, and they turn out pretty, pretty fine. Uh, again, it might not be a best practice, but it's a tenacious plant. It's a survivor. Life finds a way. But certainly then, the ones that have already come out of the casing, these are good candidates to definitely get into some, some potted cups today. But I do like this method a lot better than what I used to do with paper towel. You can still do the paper towel germination method, but this works. It doesn't cost you any paper towel, so there's less waste. But what really sold me on it was that those radicals, they're just floating in water. They're no longer getting tangled up sometimes in my paper towel. Now also, though, I don't want to cause any misconception in thinking that, like, it's always going to be this soon for the seeds. These were pretty much on a sun porch, and I like the clear cups because then they're getting some sunlight. You're going to have a little bit of a greenhouse effect happening in there. Warmer temperatures are going to speed up any chemical reaction, and so the processes that go along into the seed's development, well, those are chemical reactions happening in the plant cells. Warmer temperatures, you're going to get faster, uh, well, activity in the seeds. Yes, in eight days I've got plenty of activity happening, but this happened in July, and these two weeks here, a little bit more than two weeks, we were dealing with temperatures about in the 80s, sometimes in the 90s degrees Fahrenheit. When I've done this, sometimes getting some seeds started in April, it took more like three weeks to get to this point. And sometimes I've done this in March, and it doesn't even happen until like April. So temperature does matter for it. All right, let's get some of these guys into some dirt cups. Show you the next step. I transfer first my newly sprouted seedlings into a cup with dirt on it. Now, what kind of cup you use, that's not exactly important. For me, though, I do like something where if I wanted to, it could just go into the ground. This one's starting to show some wear and tear because I've used it multiple times. I do get some reuse out of these, as you're about to see now. But I could use just a paper cup, or really, um, as I've shown in other videos, paper towel cores, those can do some, some of the same things that these are doing here, too. Now also a little trick I do to help the sprout get its radical aligned in the dirt properly is a little trick here with some half inch PVC. You don't have to of course, it's optional, but I, I found it helps. Let's start by just a little, little bit of base layer of dirt there. Maybe a centimeter. I'm going to take my PVC and I'm going to take one of my, my little sprouts here that still has the casing on. Maybe placing it into the PVC, ever so gentle with the radical. Now I'm going to place that into the cup. Now it's standing up. Now fill dirt in around it. Now I'm not using any like crazy nutritious soil here. This is just dirt from home. Again, you, you might want to do the best for your plants and you're certainly welcome to. But I've always tried to show in Raising Monarchs ways to do things in the most affordable way. And I've also seen common milkweed growing in all sorts of types of dirt parking lots, sand dunes. So I know that this soil is going to be nutritious enough, just fine. Give it a little bit more, because some of this dirt also is going to fall into that cavity when I do remove it. And now, I need to poke his head down a little bit here, but I'm going to remove the PVC. Sometimes I like this spoon, because if I need to, I can kind of make sure he doesn't come up with the PVC. Now the radical is mostly aligned there with the dirt. i carefully Sprinkle in some more now. Radical mostly is facing up. And I can also just use the excess around it to bury it. So that way it's all nice and loose. Now the rest of the plant will pop up from there. Here's my little seed casing right there. Give it a little bit of moisture. I'm going to want to keep the soil moist. But not overdo it, of course. But some moisture here at first just lets the dirt kind of settle into where it's going to go. Ooh, that seed casing, by the way, that's from a, a previous use of this soil. So There's our little guy. Now I might set this cup in a plastic container as such with some others. Let's show you one more, one more time. So again, a quick centimeter of base dirt. This time I'll use one where the casing has already come off. Put it into the PVC. Place the PVC into the dirt. Surround the PVC with dirt. Remove the PVC. Add 
add some dirt to the cavity and maybe even tunnel in some of the dirt there. And again, the PVC part, that is optional. But it does help make sure that, that radical is lined up correctly. Add a little bit of water. Then you can set it aside with some others. Now the two right there that I just did, those guys, again, they had two weeks of soaking. And about three weeks after being put into the dirt like that, here's pretty much what they're going to look like. These began to soak in early June. Didn't actually write down the date on that one, but it was approximately uh, the start of June, first week there of June. I already used the dirt from this one. These two, they didn't make it. You know, they didn't turn out as healthy as these other guys have. And for me, I like to play the numbers. I'm not about doing it the best way. I just like to throw numbers at it and then survival of the fittest. If you make it through my process, well, then I know that you got already some good health going on. But once they're at this point, well, they're definitely ready to be in the dirt. Let's show you how we put these now into their new location. Hopefully, their permanent home. Here's where the new ones are going, and here's three that I did from just uh, just about two days ago. And I've added the straws just so I could see them pretty quickly so they don't get stepped on. And they're going to get some next-door neighbors here. Right about there. And I've already cleared it out, dug up the dirt, turned it over. There is still some, some root systems in there, but they've been chopped up so much by the spade. I'm pretty sure we're good to go. Hey, I like to often see what's out there, see what the internet is suggesting, compare it to what I've experienced. And when I looked up some things about planting milkweed, what are some tips, um, they, a lot of the sources were talking about how critical it is for that emerging radical when it elongates to be able to elongate deep down into the soil. So I admit, perhaps there is some benefit to if I used a deeper cup than this. But the thing is, I never have. I've never worried about that. And my milkweed has grown quite fine. So I'm not a best practices guy. As I've said many times in videos, I am no gardener. But I show you what I do, and it's working for me. And so hopefully this can work for you as well. But somebody could maybe want a deeper cup than this. It's a possibility. And maybe I benefit from having some pretty moist soil here in Michigan. If we're growing this someplace else, well, that radical that goes down, that becomes the taproot, and it's deep down there for a reason. When things are drier, well, it's going to be able to still get some moisture from the very deep soil where it hasn't dried out yet. And speaking of moisture, it is kind of important to, after you've planted these, make sure that, that soil stays moist. So adding in some mulch can also help. Or even just some, some leaf litter if you've got it. I'm going to dig a hole. You can see that the hole, the scoop I've got, I'm looking at a depth of about three inches or so. Now, I could just put the cup right in here. It's biodegradable, that would work, but I do like to reuse these cups, so it's up to you. And one of the other reasons why I want to use these cups, too, is as you can see, I'm constantly growing milkweed, and I am the kind of guy where some people might ask, hey, do you have any milkweed seeds? And since I always have this going on, I can say, well, would you rather like a, a plant that's already started out? So this is easy to just gift to somebody. I could put it in there, but instead, I'm just gonna kinda squeeze out here from the bottom. It's a little bit of a squeeze. This does sometimes ruin it if I've used these a few times, but I should be able to get away with another use out of this one. And that just kind of loosens the soil also. Flip it over. And place it right in there. And cover it with some dirt. Make sure my leaves are exposed. And again, when that dirt settles, the plant pretty much figures out how to get there from this point. Place a little straw in here so we easy to see it doesn't get stepped upon we're good to go but the rain hasn't started yet so I'm gonna I'm gonna finish the job place one in here having the soil loosened too when I put it in there well, that's gonna encourage more root growth and expansion from there too here's where our next one's gonna go there's also recommendations about how many inches apart they should be placed and I have always ignored such recommendations but this is usually about how much I'm doing it. I'm definitely somebody who enjoys measuring things, uh, but I'd call that about six inches. No specific reason I chose these straws other than they're bright, and I already had them. Yeah. So here's the original three from a couple days ago. And now here's another one, two, three. Four and five for today. Which, yep, gives us that six to eight again. This time eight. Probably was eight last time. So with this process, well, 
That's how I got these way more than eight healthy stalks right there. Just got to give it about four summers. Well, all right. There's my modern milkweed process, all the way from seed to the adult plants. I certainly hope this episode has helped you out. Should you decide you want to slice off a piece of your yard if you have the means, or perhaps encourage a community garden to offer some milkweed as a place for our monarchs to have an option. Or perhaps you're just looking to do what I'm doing and expand. Or maybe you've always had that interest, and hopefully you feel equipped now in case you do decide. Whatever the case may be, thank you very much for checking this out. Thank you for your interest in the conservation of the monarch butterfly and any and all pollinators. I'm Rich Lund, just a guy trying to help out the monarchs, and I'll see you next time.